Coming up, a song that was written by one of the greatest producer writers in history. Everybody knew this would be a massive hit. From its legendary bass figure to its opening line and its sing-along chorus, this was a no-doubter. Now, this legendary producer-writer also happened to be one of the greatest singers of his era. But instead of recording the song himself, he gave it to a group on the same label. And they took it all the way to number one and became one of the biggest groups in music history. Coming up next, we're going to find out the real story behind this classic from the only living member of this legendary group, coming up on Professor of Rock. Hey music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you've ever quoted Airplane, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, or Fletch, you're gonna wanna subscribe to this channel so you don't miss an episode. Nostalgia all the time, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Make sure to hit the red button to sub and check the bell so you are always in the know about our latest videos and interviews. Also, check out our latest series on Patreon and go backstage with the legends at our new live shows, our new live events. We also have entries into our merch just below, including this shirt. So it's time for another edition of our series, The New Standards. And this is a show that takes an in-depth look at songs that really set the bar in music history. It doesn't matter what decade, genre, or musical movement they might have come out of. These songs transcend all of that. They would have been hit, really hits in any era. They take us to that place that uh, only a handful of other songs can take us. They're just quite simply magic. Now, in previous episodes, we've covered Mrs. Robinson by Simon and Garfunkel. And here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. Jesus loves you. Also, Hey Jew by the Beatles. Hey Jew, don't make it bad. But today, we're going to get the story of a number one hit directly from the surviving member of the most successful R&B group in history, according to Billboard. Big Daddy, Otis Williams of The Temptations, and the story of their 1965 number one smash, My Girl. Now this is a song that no matter your age or your background, you love it. It's an absolute classic of the canon of popular music. It's a contender for the greatest song to come from one of music's most storied and talented music labels, Motown. Uh, My Girl was actually written by Smokey Robinson and Ronald White. In the interview coming up, we're gonna find out why Smokey Robinson didn't hold on to the song for himself and how The Temptations made it such a massive hit. I mean, it's in the Grammy Hall of Fame, it's in the Library of Congress, and it was The Temptations' first top 10 and number one hit and it really set the bar going forward for this magical group. In this interview, we celebrate not only this song, but the Temptations 60th anniversary as a group. There's only a few artists that you can, can name on one hand that have lasted 60 years. Uh, we're gonna talk about their new album as well. This is a really a can't miss. Now, as we go into this interview, I wanna thank our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. You know, summer coming, it's a great time for sunglasses. And at zenny.com, you can design your own. You can do prescription frames too, and you can see how you look before you buy with Zenny's mirror feature. And you can do it all for less than the price of a vinyl record. You really can't beat that. Go to zenny.com today and choose yours. Here's Otis Williams with a story of my girl. You guys had a huge hit with the way you do the things you do. The way you do the things you do. The way you do all day. You really needed a game changer. Yeah. This song, it's an American standard. It is. It is a standard yeah. of, of the American canon. We were appearing at the 20 Grand because we yeah. had a few hits, you know, that led us when we started working. And Smokey came. After we finished performing, and he was saying, Boy, you guys are something else. You're fantastic. And he's just singing our accolades. But then he paused and, you know, five of us standing up against the wall listening and smoking. He looked over at David. He said, I got a song for you. So we said, well, hey, man, bring it on. We can sing anything. So he said, OK. The Miracles and the Temptations had to work the Apollo together. So in between the shows at the Apollo, Smokey and Ronnie White, who also was one of the writers of My Girl, they were teaching us how the song would go. 
you know, and I, I have seen some pictures where as uh, we're in the dressing room and, you know, he playing the tape. So however, we learned the song and we went back to Detroit. And like I said, at first it was just basic song, boom, 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 and then we put the vocals on. But when Paul Reiser added the strings and horn, it gave it a whole nother daylight, aside from the song being a great song to begin with. I've got a but when Paul Reiser added the strings and horns, and then you could hear Jean Ba do dee do 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 do. I'm sitting there, I said, Hoo hoo, this is gonna be a big record. So uh, Smokey was in the control room, and you know, he's doing the producing, mastering, uh, mixing, and uh, balance. And I said, Smokey, I don't know how big a record this is going to become. I said, but this is going to be a big record. And Smokey, even back then, okay, 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 uh, yeah, okay, okay. They released the record. My Girl was released. We were at the Fox Theater uh, December the 26th or the 27th. It was near the end of the, uh, the calendar year. February of 1965, we were at the uh, Apollo. And Barry Gordon the Supreme, the Beatles, and the, uh, the boss man of the Copacabana. They all sent us telegrams congratulating us that uh, we were number one with the My Girl. You know, we made one mistake. So one day, Paul was in charge of the repertoire rundown of what we would do on stage. We went out on stage and we performed everything except My Girl. We were never ever take that song out the lineup. Uh, the audience almost called us every name except the child of God. <laughs> uh, see, that is something you don't mess with. I understand, though, that, uh, I mean, Eddie had sang lead on most of your stuff up to that point. But Smokey saw something in David Ruffin. Oh, yeah. Uh, Morris King at the time was our vocal coach, and he would have put certain uh, medleys together. So we were doing something to kind of step out of character of just being known for the R&B thing. And so when David did Under the Boardwalk, uh, I guess he was very, meaning Smokey was very impressed. David Ruffin was a singing, performing uh, young man. Mm -hmm. you know, and he would grab the mic and he would dip and you know, make it sweat. What? You know, because all five of us, of us at the time were taking turns and leading. Right, singing, yeah. Mm -hmm. But he heard something in uh, David's voice and his delivery. You know, so uh, David was a special talent. You know, I love him. You know, uh, uh, the brother, you know, and once he would drop to his knees and come up with the microphone and we'd be singing My Girl, uh, whoever was on the show, forget it. This is a song that you just hear the dong, 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 dong. Yeah. You know exactly what it is. It doesn't matter if it's somebody in Chile or somebody in yeah. Asia or yeah. here. Everybody yeah. knows that song. In fact, I remember Smokey in some interview, he was saying that it doesn't matter. There can be people don't even speak English, but they, they're, singing, they're singing the parts of the song. We were over in Gdansk, Poland. And uh, the Iron Curtain was just beginning to come down, you know, for as people being able to move. You know, so as we were singing Papa and pa uh, My Girl, and, now they speak Polish. Yeah. But they were singing our songs in English. <laughs> yeah. So when we finished doing the show, I said, uh, how do you all know about Motown and the songs and what have you? You know what they told me? Well, we got you, we get you guys music, black market. <laughs> we heard about the temps, we had to get that. Oh, they yeah. would go through the whatever necessary movement to get their music. Shows you that music can do certain things that politicians can't do. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that enough times. So, yeah, you can get somebody up there and be a great orator and talk about bit by bit. Music can be a soothing ornament where it's, it'll settle you down. That make great you uniter. Listen. Yes, it is. Yep. Yes, it is. Well, my girl, like you said, when you guys first heard it, you had to know it was a hit. I always wonder why Smokey didn't keep it for himself. It's so cool that he gave it to you guys. Because I think at the time they had had a, a record that didn't do so well. Right. And they could have, he could have kept My Girl for the miracles, but he gave it to you guys. Well, you know, I think that when he heard David Ruffin and then knowing how we would do our harmonies. My girl, my girl, 
See, aside from Smokey being an artist, he was a producer first, you know, so I guess his producer hand said, uh-uh, I'm doing this on the temps, you know, and uh, when we rehearsed it uh, at his house and then uh, at the Apollo, you know, and he could, he said, I didn't bother the temps as far as voicing the harmonies, I let them do their own voicing yeah. of the harmonies, you know, I just wanted to show the structure of the song, the melody, temps, you know, so the background, he left that up to us. Because he usually would arrange the vocals. Yeah, yeah. And he said, you guys do it. Uh, yeah, he did. I did read that he wrote it about his former wife, Claudette Rogers, which I believe Barry said was the first lady of Motown. She called, was. You know? Yeah. She was, of course, part of the Miracles, right? Yeah, she was. After all, I'm the one. How did you come up with the background vocals? What was kind of the impetus? Was it just... Natural came together. Natural. Uh, you know, once a producer would show, now some producers had the idea how they wanted certain parts of the song, yeah. you know, especially when it would come to the hook. But everything around the uh, staff of the hook, hey, Tim, y'all do your thing. Well, I you. That has always been a, a strong point uh, for the Timps. You know, uh, we'd hear something and, you know, one of us who would pick up. Like brothers. Yeah. Could just sing together so yeah. naturally. Smokey wanted a song for you guys that would hit both number one on the R&B charts and the pop charts. Yeah. And it did just that. It did. It was number one on the R&B charts for like six weeks. Yeah. Eight weeks or something like that. Man, let me tell you something. I, I love my girl, but there was a time I said, come on, y'all. You know, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> you know, because everywhere you would go there, you know, you would hear my girl. Even today. I mean, yeah. I've been on elevators and I would hear my girl. Yeah, no, so it's a song, like you say, it's a standard now. Well, and it's recharted so many times. But, I mean, you had Eddie Floyd. Oh, talking about my God. Good girl. Right. You had Otis Redding. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you heard Otis sing it, that yeah. probably was pretty cool. Oh, it was. And it's cold outside. i got the most. Hall and Oates. My girl, my girl, my girl. Talking oh, about the whispers. Suave. Of course, a resurgence when the Macaulay Culkin film came out named yes, after yeah. My Girl. Yeah, right? My Girl. Yeah. My Girl. Recharted, the original song, uh, Recharted. Yeah. It went yeah. to number two in the UK because it wasn't a hit in the UK the first time. Oh, okay. It okay. went top 30 or something, but it went yeah. to number two. See? That shows the mark of a great song. A great song. And yeah. when we go to England, uh, in October, <laughs> that's one of the songs that better be in the lineup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, performing the Ed Sullivan Show, because you guys had so many appearances on the Ed Sullivan Show. Tell us about the challenge of that, because I think today's generation, they look at the Ed Sullivan Show wow. like it's royalty. That was a show that on Sunday night, everybody watched that. Everybody tuned in. And yeah. what are some of your fondest memories of that? Well, to start off, when we first heard that we were going to go on the Ed Sullivan show, you tell my five brothers that were scared. Reason being, aside from Ed Sullivan being such a, a powerful show, uh, but when uh, our manager Shelly Berger had worked out uh, an agreement for it to have us on whenever we'd have a single. And see, Ed Sullivan show would scare you to death because that was live. Now, they would do a safety in the event that something catastrophic would happen. But the actual showing of Ed Sullivan, you better have your note. You better know your steps because it's, it's not one of those, all right, somebody in the Timps messed up. We got to do it again. No, no, <laughs> yeah. no, ain't none of that. You know, you got to do it right the first and only time that you are on there. What can make me feel this way is my But Detroit would shut down whenever they knew that a Motown act was on Ed Sullivan. Yeah, it was that powerful, that kind of, what, the Temps, the Supremes, the Four Tops, whomever, uh, Ed Sullivan? Talking about my girl. Yeah, so, and he had us on there a lot of uh, different times. Temptation. That's what he said. Yeah, My Girl, when that was a hit, you guys were on there, and that was a great performance. Yeah. When it's cold outside, 
Every time, uh, you know, we would go on, and then we kind of stepped out of character. There are times when we did something that wasn't Temptation or wasn't Motown, yeah. just to let them know that we could do other songs, you yeah. know, rather than what we are known for. That performance of My Girl is on a lot of the, the greatest hits of Ed Sullivan, mm -hmm. you know, when, when he, like the 20 greatest performances, they always include that one. Of okay. course, the Beatles and everything. Oh, yeah. That's so cool that the Beatles sent you a telegram and the Supremes. Yeah, and yeah. I say it all the time. Greatest decade in the history of the world is 60s yeah. for music. Yeah, I mean, well, absolutely. Absolutely. You'll never see another decade no, no, like that. No, no, no. Um, because I listen at the songs of today. I'm not impressed. You know, I <laughs> mean, and it's very reflective of where we are as a people. I never will forget when uh, we had to do the way you do the things you do. We had to do it phonetically because we couldn't sing it, you know, and it was uh, German and Italian. So Miss Edwards said, now, Temps, you got to do this right. No cussing. So we said, no cussing. We never would cuss on uh, anything that we do. That was 1964, 65. I listen at the stuff that's on the radio today. And like I'll say it over and over again, the FCC must have really relaxed their laws because they're cussing. They're saying stuff and say, oh, you got to pick it. No, they didn't say that. But it's reflective of what we are as a people today, all because of this. Yep, and it doesn't last. That's no. the problem with these songs. My Girl, we, we've used that as an example, that yeah. almost 60 years later, people still sing. Hundred, hundreds of years from now, people yeah. will still sing My Girl. Yeah. I don't know that that'll happen with the music that's in the top 40 today. No, no. Yeah. And uh, that's a legacy of, of those songs. Now we're going to bring in Ron Tyson, the current lead singer of The Temptations, and talk about the new album, Temptation 60. Temptation 60, we already talked about that you can count on your one hand the groups in popular music that have lasted for 60 years. And, and you know, you throw the Beatles in, the, in, in there, but the Beatles didn't last 60 years. They weren't together 60 years. The Temps were, you know what I mean? Right, so, right. so it's a little bit different when you talk about that, to have a group together for that long. But... Just great album, When We Were Kings. I want to ask you about that. We we Narda Michael Walden, the great King Narda, who is, uh, has done so many great songs. Sure. Aretha Franklin, yeah. Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey. Right. I mean, the guy's a hit making machine. And yeah. uh, really in the 80s, he was, he was like a, a, a right. Holland yeah. Dozier Holland, man. He, sure, he could sure. write and produce yeah. uh, with the best of them. That came to me as an epiphany. When I woke up one morning, like I always say, I thank God for each day that he let me wake up. Yeah. And it was immediately after that, I said, Otis, you should do something about the classic Timps. So I laid there in bed and I said, okay, who should I get to help me do this? Smokey came to mind first, but Smokey was sick. So the next one, Nada. So I called Nada and I said, Nada. On this new album, by it being the kind of album it is, I would like to acknowledge the classic temps along with Dennis. And he said, great idea. With so I was harming, you know, uh, some of the melody. And I said, don't forget to put the full-headed microphone in and the different leads and what have you. So I just gave him the summary of the idea. And him and a young man by the name of Preston Glass uh, took it from there and uh, turned it into something. But I told him, I said, no, I don't want none of them, them things where you sit down and for the bass, I said, I want this here. On it. And I said, I'd like to have uh, Larry Graham. Yeah. And he went and got Larry Graham. And uh, Larry called him and I talked to him. He said, oh, this is an honor to be on the C album. And uh, thank you. When We Were Kings, it is such a great song about the legacy of 60 and the Temptations. I love the lyrics and I love how it paints that picture. Everything you've been through, like mm -hmm. you said, honoring all the lead singers and all, all the different people that have been involved. How did it come about? Well, in honor of myself, we were phone back and forth. He played something. I said, yeah, good. Then I would suggest whatever needed to enhance it even more so. So it was that kind of collaboration, you know, with him being up in Northern California and us down here. So he would call. And then one day he sent uh, me the track when he had added Larry Graham. And there again, I said, now nah, that's what we're talking about. You know, I don't like them the way they sit down and they can program it. <laughs> right, and right. For the temps, that don't work. You know, we've had something to do, it depends on the producer, but uh, not have captured what uh, we uh, are, are all about. Oh, 
the sweet tenor singing uh, Tyson over there. Yeah. You know, I started it off. And, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to decide, uh, waiting to find out what's going to be our second release. When you write a song like that that kind of encompasses what the group has meant, mm -hmm. sometimes it can fall flat right. if it's not done the right way. You guys really nailed it. And also, yeah, great vocal performances. Yeah. As well as uh, the the bass, what you're saying, you got, it's got to be the real deal. Oh yeah. The greatest of all time. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about the Temptations' classic Motown hit, "My Girl." What are your memories of this song? You can also get the Temptations' new album by clicking on the link below. I will also put it as a pinned comment. If you like our content, we do invite you to subscribe below. And don't forget to check out our new merch and our Patreon. We've got a new show there. Until next time, three chords and the dream, my friends. Hey.